John Catcher here with a, another random monologue. Um, Self-esteem versus esteeming others better than oneself. Um, I know that with psychology and psychiatry, um, there's a lot of stuff about self-esteem, self-esteem, self-esteem. Um, let's really think about what esteeming oneself is. It's lifting oneself up. To es think about the word esteem. That's praising or putting forward or lifting up someone or something else. If we're doing that to ourself, we may very well run the risk of going against God um, and quickly become selfish if we are only concerned about our self-esteem. There is a big difference between loving oneself as God loves us and having high self-esteem. Um, you know, the, the scripture calls us to esteem others better than ourselves. You know, put others forward. Um, look to the care of others before the care of ourselves. That doesn't mean neglecting ourselves. That doesn't mean not loving ourselves. You know, the, the order in which we're supposed to, you know, put people, other beings, you know, peoples, um, is God, then everyone else, then ourselves. Um, but, you know, with God, there's an equalizing factor. You know, he puts everybody on the same par. Um, even though people have different places and, um, you know, different positions. Different places, uh, different um, gifts, different types or lacks of authority. Um, you know, they're all loved equally in the eyes of God. And, you know, everyone's equally fallen no matter how much or how little they've sinned in their lives. So, you know, focusing on self doesn't help things. Um, the way to help things is to, you know, put others first, you know, firstly God and, you know, everything that he's about, you know, love, joy, peace, um, goodness, gentleness, meekness, long suffering, forbearance, mercy, grace, um, Godly jealousy, which is a loving, protective jealousy, like, you know, like fathers and brothers and mothers and sisters have over their family members if, you know, they're wanting to spend time with or be influenced by someone that's going to hurt them. Um, you know, he's a God of justice. It, and it's righteous, it's pure, he's holy, um, you know, sanctified unto all things good. He is the source from whence all blessings flow, and he is good. So, um, you know, that's why he's supposed to be put first, because he gives everybody, <laughs> he puts everybody else first. So, you know, he... He who made all of us was willing to die for all of us. That tells you how much he loves us and how much he puts us first. Um, yeah, that's a big deal. Um, 
And, you know, then other people, you know, we're called to, you know, love our neighbors as ourselves. And we're called to love others as God loves us. Yeah, that's a big deal. And, um, you know, to love our enemies. You know, they're included in others. And at times they're included in neighbors. Um, Most of the time they are. Um, you know, the only way for a, an enemy to become a friend or a brother is to love them. And that's esteeming them better than ourselves. To, to love someone when, and treat someone better when they're not treating us good, that's esteeming others better than ourselves. But as far as you know, how we treat ourselves and how we look at ourselves. You know, self esteem is just selfishness. But when we love ourselves as God loves us rather than just praising ourselves and lifting ourselves up and being haughty, you know, the Bible speaks against that. Um, you know, when we love ourselves as God loves us, you don't need to esteem yourself. Um, because love's a lot better than that. You know, love cares. Love nurtures. Love strengthens. Love feeds and helps to grow and helps to blossom. So when we, we look at ourselves the way God does, you know, you know, to us, we may look like nothing, or may look like God's gift to everybody else, you know, determined on how we look at ourselves, or, you know, somewhere in the middle. But when we look at ourselves through God's eyes, um... Yeah, our righteousness is those filthy rags. And when we're not doing the things of God, we're making ourselves his enemy. But he loved us all enough to die to take away all our sins and free us from any and all unrighteousness so that we could one day be with him and have no evil in our life and only good and pure and righteous and holy things you know the scripture says that his right hand are pleasures forevermore those are pure righteous holy and true and absolutely wonderful we only get a a little sampling this side of heaven of those those types of pleasures they're completely different um, but you know, he, he thinks we're worth loving and that we're worthy enough to love that he, he died because he doesn't want to do without us. You know, he, he can function and survive and sustain himself just fine without us. He doesn't need you know, he, he doesn't need any of us to live or take care of his needs. He wants us in his life. You know, he, he wants a family. He wants more than just himself. And he loves us enough to not only give us the free will to choose whether we have a relationship with him or not, or anyone else for that matter. But, you know, also a way for us to be able to. Because, you know, holy God, sin doesn't mesh up. Anything sinful gets near it, gets destroyed. Not because God is like bam, 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 bam with hammers and lightning bolts and mallets and floodwaters and all sorts of other stuff. No. Um, 
It's because his all-consuming fire and destroys anything that is not of him, which is sickness and sin. Um, you know, things that are not of him, they, they just go to nothing. Um, they, they destroy themselves or it sells, however you want to put it. Um, you know, he made a way for us. Um, he loves us that much. And if we love others that way, that's a big deal. Um, but to love ourselves that way, that is really, really, really hard. But self-esteem doesn't get you anywhere at all, except hurting yourself and hurting others. Um, because you're only looking at what is good for yourself and not paying attention to what is good for others. And yes, if everyone looked out for everyone else first, then, you know, there wouldn't be a problem with any of this. But since there are people that really only care about themselves, I don't understand that. They can be freed of it. They're, they're loved. Um, yeah, I don't understand that. Um then there are, there are people that aren't going to be willing to, you know, put others first. Unless it gets them what they want. But that's still being selfish. Um, yeah. Um, so, what do you guys think? Self-esteem? Or esteeming others? Better than ourselves? Think about how you treat yourself and how you think of yourself and then think of whether you want to treat others that way or not or would want others to treat you that way. And then, you know, those of you that know God and those of you that want to know God, whether you realize it or not. Um, you know, think of how God treats you. He's everything good. Um, if you want to find him, you'll find him. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, you know, I'm still learning how to love myself like God loves me. Um, Loving others is a lot easier than loving myself because with everything that's happened in my life and how others have treated me, it's, it's hard for me to love myself. But when I think of how God loves me and all that God has done, is doing, and plans on doing out of love for me, it helps me to see that I, I do have worth and that I do have value and you know he is making me worthy of love and of the blessings that he's given me. I'm not of myself you know I didn't do anything um, all the good that comes out of me comes from him plain and simple any good you see in me comes from him. I love him. Without a doubt. Because he loved me first. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'll be praying for all of you guys. And I love all of you guys, whether I know you're not. And yes, I'm praying for you, whether I know you're not. Um, and the Lord 
Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face smile upon you. Don Catra, 